Hey folks, and welcome to Caves of Cud. Now this is a really interesting uh, roguelike game, and if you've seen uh, Tales of Magiol, uh, that I have a few videos of here on my channel, then this game probably won't be that foreign to you, at least the way you play. But for those of you who n have never played a roguelike before, they are usually turn-based and set in some form of a fantasy world, but this game... I don't really want to say fantasy, but it is set in the future where, you know, mankind was once very, very advanced, but now our all the cities are mostly just uh, covered by jungles, and the people who still live are more, more or less just tribesmen. And most of them are mutated in some way, which brings to the fun part of this game. Anyway, so let's start the game up. There, um, we will first enter the, uh, you know, the uh, character creation scene, and we can either play as the mutated human or the true kin, which are well, just you know, normal people, who um, I think it was. As you can probably hear, I don't know everything about the game, but I, I think the story is something along uh, the Fallout line that they hidden great vaults of some form, and that's why they managed to remain human while everybody outside started to mutate. <clears throat> anyway, and as you can see, there are the normal stats with strength and all of that, and... Well, if you want to know about each attribute, you can just read what it says about it, but if you've ever played a, an RPG game before, then this probably isn't very foreign to you. Except for ego, which it kind of determines your mental uh, mental powers, and um, I don't think I will be using a whole lot of them, so they are not that important to me. But they also do determine how good you are at haggling, how good prices you can get when uh, talking with merchants. And I do want my character to have pretty high intelligence. Because we do get skill points, and we'll, we'll go with those a bit later. Let's see, let's raise it like this. How much do we have? Two more, that brings us up to 21, 3... Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm good with this. And here are all the mutations that you can get, and as you can see, there are quite a few of them. Quite a few of them. And uh, there are some pretty fun things here, like you can have multiple arms, you can grow multiple legs, you can have horns, and, you know, all kind of fun things. But I want my character to be triple-jointed, and kind of want him to have regeneration as well, that would be nice. And in order to be able to choose some more mutations, I'm going to pick the ravenous traits. It does force us to consume a bit more food during the game, but, um, you know, it's fine. I usually haven't run into any problems with that. I've never starved to death, at least as far as I can remember. And we do want the Force Wall. This allows us to, um, well, set up a wall of energy around people or around ourselves. It's really, really useful. And usually, if you're completely new to this game, then I would probably recommend you to use... Let's see, where is it? Uh, come on, dude, where are you? There we, there we are. Precognition. This allows you to activate your ability, and for the next 16 rounds, unless you you know, level up the mutation, you can do whatever you want, try out a few things, and should you die, you'll just revert back to the position you were at before. So, as said, if you're completely new to the game, there are enemies that you have never seen and you don't know if you can beat them, then activating this ability and, you know, trying out the fight, see how it goes, it's a really handy, um, handy mutation to have around. But I am going to go with disintegration and well that deals damage to everything around you I've never really played with this one before I kinda came up with it when I was preparing for this video 
so I don't know how this will go. But anyway, I'm good with this. And these are the classes that you can choose from. Each one of them gives you two, well, normally two stats. This one gives you three plus uh, to the willpower attribute and one minus to strength. But we are going to go with Scholar, so we can have some more intelligence, which gives us more skill point every time we level up. And it also gives us access to a few skills, like Heal, uh, Staunch Wounds, and the Gadget Inspector. And I'll go over those more later on, if we survive, because this game is ridiculously hard. Just because I play this game a few hours doesn't mean I'll survive the very first you know, enemy that I come across. It's highly possible that I will be de dead in the next 10 minutes and then we'll have to start all over again. But that's the fun part about this game. <laughs> anyway, so let's start this up and... Sure, let's go with Kenny W. And yeah, the introduction is basically just this. That you ar arrive at a village called Japa, blah blah blah, and that's about it. <laughs> that's all the help you get. Anyway, so we need to talk with this red guy over here, so I am in search of work. And that gives us access to the Red Rock in the north, which will contain our very first quests. And we need to head over there and figure out what's eating their crops. Because all the guys around here are just Basically just farmers, except for this guy, he's some kind of preacher. Anyway, we accept his quest as well, and that gives us access to... This is the world map, by the way, and if you don't, if you can't see where we are, we are in the bottom left corner, in the little green area there in the middle. Anyway, so when I talk to that guy, I... I we got the mission to get to this place, and I only have ever been up here once. Because as you can see, this world is pretty large. And we do require to eat and drink and all that as we go on, so you kind of have to prepare if you want to travel anywhere. Anyway, so the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna rob this village of everything they have. And grab all this. Now all normal, what we would con consider normal items or, you know, modern items are considered as weird artifacts in this game. But since we do have the gadget inspector skills, we do have a much larger chance to figure out what the uh, artifacts actually are. And this is an acid gra gas grenade, so now we know that. <laughs> and crap. Because we can't really steal from people if they're in the same room as us. So, okay, we're gonna have to ignore that. Maybe I should lower the sound, that's actually a bit annoying. Um, like so, maybe? Okay, let's open this chest. And I apologize if you... Uh, if you came to, to this video to hope that I would explain how all the controls and such work, uh, you can find all that by just, you know, pressing F1 and probably read through this part or he hitting escape and look through the key mappings. It's not really that difficult since most of the things uh, that you need to know do appear on screen when you need to know them. But you do move around with the number pad, so... Moving down with 2, moving right with 6, moving left with 4, and moving up with 8, and you get the idea. And since it is turn-based, you can skip a turn by pr pressing 5, which is really useful in combat sometimes, you know, if you need your... Um, if you don't really need want to move forward, but you want your uh, enemies to move forward, but you, to, you want to do some form of attack. Anyway, speaking of attacks, this is our uh, ability screen, and since I have played with similar abilities before, all of these have already been um, set into specific uh, hotkeys. 
But what you usually do is you press enter and then you click on which what button you want to be the hotkey for. Okay, so this guy in here is the trader in this area. So let's have a talk with him. And when we press tab, we can basically trade with anybody that we can have a conversation skill. There are some characters that don't want to trade or they don't have anything. But most people do have the ability to trade away something. And the currency in this game is drums, which is... Well, it's basically just your... It's fresh water, basically. So if you want to have a lot of money on you, you either need to have something, some really valuable goods, or you need to waltz around with a bunch of water. <laughs> and we did start with a pretty large amount of water here, actually. <clears throat> and as you can see, they do... They do... Um, way a bit, so that's not good. Usually what I used to do, and what I usually do, is I try to trade away most of the water for some form of um, trade goods, like uh, copper nuggets, because they have the same value, both if you sell them or if you buy them. But anyway, we do need to look over our equipment here. So let's just get naked in the middle of the street first, so we know what kind of equipment we have. Uh, there is a uh, mutation that you can get which is uh, night vision. That way you don't have to use uh, a torch whenever in, whenever it's night or you're in, in the caves or something. But I usually don't pick it. Uh, I mean I usually don't get it. I usually don't get the night vision mutation because there are items that you can get li like a uh, floating glow something, something, something <laughs> that you can equip and that way you don't have to use one torch. I mean one hand to carry a torch, which is real handy. But they do cost half a fortune. Just saying. Anyway, so let's talk with this guy again. <clears throat> and let's see. What do you have? Sometimes this guy has some really, really amazing items, but sometime like today, he do doesn't really have much of anything. But we do want to get as much ammunition as we can, no matter what kind of ammunition that it is, mostly. Um, having some armor would, of course, be beneficial. Boar skin gloves, sure, that would be beneficial as well don't really care that much about the artifacts now in the beginning since I don't even know if I'll survive the first monster that I meet. Uh, would be nice if we could get some better weapons but I don't really see any, any, any good one to pick that is within our price range that is worth getting that is but a wooden buckler would definitely be useful. And as I mentioned before, buying a few copper nuggets would be a good idea if you want to get rid of some uh, some water. Because they they cost 10 to, uh, to buy and you can sell them for the exact same price. So that's nice. And let's get rid of everything that we don't need. We need, don't need two of these. Actually, since we are buying a leather armor, we don't need any of them. Uh, we don't need the staff. We don't need three short bows, but we do need one. And I think that's about it, actually. Yeah, we're good with this. Okay, so let's sell. 66, that's fine with me. And there we go. So let's equip the items that we just got. Mm, the left arm will put the wooden buckler. And if you don't know what a buckler is, it's kind of a shield that you attach to your arm. A very small shield that you don't need to hold on to. It's just uh, strapped to your uh, lower arm. And uh, let's put on the uh, boar skin gloves. And I think that's about it. 
We can grab some more uh, quests around here, like checking the statue. And we can get a quest for visiting Tepar, wherever that is. The same goes for if you um, find any engraved or painted items. You can look at them in your inventory screen and you know see what's written on them. Sometimes the, that gives you a quest, which is real nice. Also, this guy gives you another quest for finding knickknacks. In other words, finding artifacts. And we also have the ability to trade with him. He does have some really good data disk sometimes, but as you can see, they cost quite a bit of money. And ba data disks are schematics for items that you can build later on. Now, this game doesn't have an, a huge amount of um, crafting options, but it does have some. And you do need these the data disks data discs in a in order to be able to build anything. But anyway, let's head out, see how this goes. So we are heading north. We are going to head to this area at Red Rock. It's kind of the tutorial-ish area, but uh, say four times out of five, I die. <laughs> so yeah. <clears throat> And usually, every time you take one step on the map, one entire area on the map is a 3x3 three three area in real life, so to speak. So you can, ba you can walk here, but it's much e it goes a whole lot faster to just travel on the main map. And because um, I do have the automation of drinking fresh water and eating food when we're hungry, we don't have to eat every time we take one step. At some points in the game it might actually be more useful to turn these off if you do, because some food don't... it's on, except for, you know, satisfying your hunger, it also satisfies your, your thirst, so you might... might might I really can't talk today. So in some points in the game it might actually be better to micromanage your food and your water than just automatically eating whatever you have in your inventory. Okay, so let's head in here. And as you can see this uh, gives us 50 XP because we have traveled to Red Rock. And our torch yeah, there we go. Our torch gets activated because it's automated as well. You extinguish it when you don't need it, and you light it when you need it. Okay, so if you don't know if the creature that you just uh, met is uh, friendly or not, you can either press L and check, and as we can see it says the baboon is hostile. Or you can press Alt, I think it's alt. Yes, yes, it's alt. And you can see that he's red, which means he's hostile. Now, if he's covered in blood, he's probably red as well, so it's not that, you know, reliable. But anyway, we should be able to kill this guy if we can mit actually hit him. There we go. And as you can see, there's not a lot of um, graphics in this game. So you kind of have to read what's happening. And there's another baboon. And I think he left the area, actually. He left the map. Yeah, but there is another baboon in the north because I can see he's throwing rocks at me. He's injured. Come on, keep hitting. Hitting. Hitting! Come on, hit him. Dude. There we go. Thank you. I might actually be forced to use a few of my skills here soon because we are simply so bad in combat, <laughs> which is why I tend to die in this area, no matter how many times I've actually gone through this area. Now the place is, you know, randomly generated, so it's not like it's the same place every time you go here. Okay, there we go. And actually, did I... 
I didn't equip my bow. There we go. And we want to use normal wooden arrows. Okay, so I don't see anybody else. So I'm going to press uh, zero right now, and this will automate the ex uh, exploration of the area. And he stops whenever there is a enemy nearby. Now, I don't see where the enemy is. There he is. Come on, just kill him. And if you're wondering what the, uh, you know, the red stuff around... That started p popping up around the baboon. That was me hitting him and pools of blood started appearing. <laughs> so now we're standing in one drum of blood. Which isn't a lot, but, you know, it's a little bit. And that's just a goat. Goats are friendly. Most of the time, anyway. Except the goat people. They're not that friendly. Now, there are tons and tons of factions in this game, and you can actually check. Uh, I don't remember which button it is, but here you go. You can check all your um, your relationship with each faction in the game. And if you have a positive uh, relation with one faction, then they will come to help you in battle. If it's, you know, you know just a neutral around zero, then they simply won't attack you. Which is also nice. And there are... Every special character in this game has some kind of backstory. So they usually have some form of enemy. And if you kill them, y your... Um, your re relationships with one faction will change, usually. One or more. And the yellow baboon there is actually... Considered... Uh, easy, but is he is a hulking baboon, which means he can do a whole lot more damage and deal a whole lot, uh, He's a lot tougher to take down So I might actually have to run here We're down to 10 health Seven Yeah, we're gonna have to run so I'm gonna press two which is the hotkey for my sprinting ability so we can get a bit away from him and then I'm going to set up the force field around myself, like so. I'm going to activate my healing ability, which gives me, I think it's four or five ter turns where my uh, HP is guaranteed to regenerate. And now I'm simply going to try to uh, shoot this baboon from a distance, but it's not going too well. <laughs> We hit him again, we hit him again. He's injured, he's wounded. Did he? Yeah, we, we look alright, we killed him. Cool. So there's just one baboon left. And you can do the opposite of this. I mean, you can, if you do have the force, um, the force wall um, mutation, then you might as well just, you know, in, encircle an enemy. With this and you can just stand on the outside and shoot in which is really handy if you want to do if it's just you against a very strong opponent okay that's another hulking baboon let's see if we can kill this guy it's only the two of us now he's still fine Come on, we kill him. Badly wounded, come on, just a bit more. Badly wound no, we're almost dead. Crap. Okay, so we will take another eleven turn before we can use the force wall again. And another five turns before we can sprint. And I'm not gonna risk this, I'm just gonna keep taking a few more steps until our force wall is completed. Now I'm going to sprint a little bit because, yeah, we can use our force wall now. Sprint away and encircle this guy with our force wall. There we go. And shoot him to death. There. Much better. Much, much better. 
Okay, so, but I'm gonna end the first episode here, and if you guys liked it, please do give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't, and a comment down below. And I don't know how often I'm going to upload the, these episodes. It might be I only upload once every two day, every two days or so. But we'll, we'll see. I mean, you'll notice. And if you're watching this from the future, then it doesn't really matter to you anyway. <laughs> So, yeah, um, feels like I should probably mention something else here, but I don't remember what that was. Hmm. Ah, well, whatever. So, and I hope you guys have a good, good one, and thank you for watching.